Behold, Candor, Planet Krypton's greatest dream. Her brilliant doctors cured the sky flu, her mighty warriors captured the wicked scientist Dr. Zadu, and her proud citizens laughed off the apocalyptic warnings of Jor-El. How could they listen? Everything they'd ever experienced told them, Candor is forever. Even when Jor-El's prophecy came true and Krypton exploded, Candor endured. The alien intelligence known as Brainiac had collected the city, miniaturizing and bottling her. And for a quarter century, her people slumbered in suspended animation, awaiting the day that Krypton's last son, Kal-El, son of Jor-El, would find a way to awaken them. But Kal-El got distracted. He fought for Earth instead of Kandor, and in the last terrible battle with Brainiac, Kal-El's fortress exploded and Kandor and all her people vanished. And that's when I entered the picture, Superman. I took your tiny, abandoned people and I sent them out into your world, where this yellow sun gave them all your powers to destroy everything you loved. But why, you wonder? Why? Well, you and your friends have finally tracked me down, so soon you may have your answer. But first, Kal-El, son of jor -El, Behold Kandor, Krypton's greatest dream. In the microscopic laboratory known as the Ant Farm, Dr. Ray Palmer, Batman, Superman, and Supergirl look over the city of Kandor. The damage to the city is clearly the result of explosives. Kandor has experienced war. Unsure of what exactly is going on, the heroes agree to shrink themselves into the bottled city and investigate the source of the chaos. Inside, the three immediately feel the effects of the Kryptonian atmosphere. Supergirl and Superman can barely maintain their flight and feel their powers draining quickly, while Batman is protected by his reinforced suit but is visibly struggling with the environment and says they need to move quickly. They find some Kryptonian soldiers, but Kara notices that something is wrong with them. The man's hearts are beating in unison. Something is controlling these people. The group covertly moves to the home of a trusted friend of Supergirl's, but they find the place ransacked and Kara's friend Tally appears to be gone. Superman accidentally activates the device, which recognizes his DNA as that of Kal-El. It states that two relatives of Clark's are currently on Krypton, namely Superman's aunt and grandmother on his mother's side. The device then goes on to state that Jor-El was Krypton's greatest villain, who framed Dr. Zadu and exiled him to the Phantom Zone. Superman's father is then accused of destroying Krypton and sealing Kandor within a bottle, which he has bestowed upon his son Kal-El to keep the city within their clutches. Superman is outraged at the slander, but suddenly they are discovered by a squad of soldiers. The men destroy themselves, burning Clark's hand in the process, but Superman doesn't care about this injury. He has had enough and says they are going to the tower. With great effort, Superman and Supergirl fly to the top of the tower to destroy the Kandorian's exit route, while Batman attacks the tower base and frees the captive prisoners. Suddenly, the heroes hear a sinister laugh and Dr. Zadu, also known as the Phantom King, appears in front of Superman. The King has had an infinite amount of time to plot his revenge in the Phantom Zone, and he gleefully summons Superman's family and Tally, all of whom are clearly under his control and ready to fight. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Batman Superman number 19. So this one was pretty good. I like this comic's art and we get a lot of really cool moments in this issue. As somebody pointed out in the comments for last issue, it's nice to have a modern story about Kandor and this comic has a really solid introduction that goes into the history of the Kryptonian city. And though it's very brief, there's some really well-paced action and excitement peppered throughout the comic to keep it from being too dry or boring. Sadly, there are a few things that bug me about this comic. The first problem is a little nitpicky, 
but twice in a row now they've made the same joke about how Batman can do anything because he's, well, Batman. That was really funny and great the first time they made this joke, but it feels really lazy to do this twice in a row. Uh, but like I said, this is a very minor point in an otherwise perfectly serviceable comic book. The other issue I have is less about this comic in particular, and more about how I can't help but feel a little disappointed with the story arc. When this started, it was hinting at Superman facing a new villain, but Dr. Zadu is just an old character that's already appeared in the New 52 line, so I do feel like this story starts off in a very misleading way. The same thing happens in the last story arc of this series. We had a really cool premise where Batman and Superman lost their memories. It was a really neat idea and we got to see some really cool stuff. For example, Batman without his memories was a way happier guy who just thought it was awesome to have all these gadgets and cool tech. And they also were hinting at a potential bond between him and Lois Lane. But then not much really happened and the story just kind of fizzled out for me after a while. Though as a bit of a side note, Batman and Lois do have some pretty interesting lines in this comic as well. I don't know if writer Greg Pak has plans for this in the future, but that'd be something I'd really like to see them explore a little more because that's a pretty fascinating idea to me. But I expect this story arc is going to wrap up pretty quickly, and the whole thing is starting to look like it's shaping up to be a really underwhelming story. It's been four issues, and it feels like very little has really happened yet, other than just hyping this villain whose motivations and story really aren't anything that new. That's some pretty lousy storytelling when you get right down to it. So I can't really say I'd recommend this comic. You wouldn't miss much if you were to skip this one, but I do like the art and certain parts of the story enough that if you were to get this comic bundled with others, or just at a discounted rate online, it certainly wouldn't be that bad, and it was an entertaining enough comic, just nothing that special. And based on what I've read of the other comic I'll be reviewing this week, there's better stuff out there right now. Let me know what you think of Batman Superman so far in the comments section. I do like to set a high standard with my reviews, so I tend to be overly critical sometimes. But I feel it's better to be honest, and when I do like something, you know that it's really good and worth your time. I don't like throwing out recommendations arbitrarily because I don't want to waste your time and money. Plus, sometimes it's fun being a pessimistic snob. You should all try that more often. <laughs> anyway, you can keep up on all our videos through our website, where everything is nicely ordered and full of playlists. You can also get our latest updates through our Facebook and Twitter pages. The links to all of these can be found in the video description. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.